10 Thor deleted scenes that would have changed the MCU. Deleted scenes can be fun to watch but there are some in Thor's back catalog with implications that would have changed plenty of things in the MCU. Thor's MCU journey has seen the God of Thunder undergo one of the most compelling and significant character growth arcs in the franchise's history. This has spanned four solo movies that have garnered decidedly mixed reactions over the years with the upcoming Thor sequel under significant pressure to measure up to the best Thor movie to date. It is safe to say that some of the deleted scenes across Thor's solo career contain content that might have hindered or helped this cinematic legacy. Yet some are more consequential than others introducing concepts that would have changed the wider MCU to varying degrees of severity. Of the many that were cut from the final product these are the most consequential of Thor's deleted scenes. Though he's been through many changes Thor the God of Thunder has become one of the least replaceable heroes in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Selvig is saved by Thor sees Eric Selvig impaled by a large shard of glass when the destroyer shatters a nearby window. The wound appears to be fatal before Thor picks up a pouch, presumably brought from Asgard by Lady Sif and the Warriors 3, containing a healing stone. Thor then crushes the stone over Selvig's wound with the shard still jutting out completely healing Selvig and allowing him to get to his feet. Thor also mentions a healing stone in another deleted scene that expands on Thor's stay in the hospital. The stake-lowering implications of such a medicinal marvel are hard to overstate. Given the stone sealed Selvig's mortal wound as quickly as Wolverine's healing factor it is no wonder that the scene was cut before it would fall on Thor to become the de facto healer of the Avengers. Deaths like Quicksilver and the Warriors 3 would have been easy to sidestep if healing stones were canon which isn't to mention the implications of the stone also making the shard of glass vanish. Over the duration of the MCU some of the most powerful weapons in any superhero franchise have been used to defeat both heroes and villains. In the dialogue following the confiscation of Jane's work by S.H.I.E.L.D. Eric Selvig references two unnamed characters including a pioneer in gamma radiation and a colleague who has had dealings with S.H.I.E.L.D. before. The former is evidently supposed to be Bruce Banner while the latter could be any number of scientists in league with S.H.I.E.L.D. Yet the original script for Thor, via IMS, is much clearer as he mentions Dr. Pym by name stating. Please let me contact one of my colleagues. Dr. Pym has had some dealings with these people. I'll email him and see if he can help. The line is practically word for word with Pym omitted though Hank Pym's MCU debut would occur just four years later in 2015's Ant-Man. At a similar age it is no surprise that the two S.H.I.E.L.D. adjacent geniuses would be well acquainted but it would have been an exciting MCU Easter egg to have Pym name drop so early in the MCU's history. Why it was cut is unclear but perhaps Marvel was being cautious about heralding the arrival of iconic MCU heroes so early in the cinematic universe. Similarly to Hank Pym's name drop an alternative ending for Thor sees Eric Selvig mention SWORD 10 years before the organization debuted in WandaVision. The alternative ending sees Jane emit a beacon to Thor from Midgard by way of contacting him while Selvig works with SHIELD in the Smith Motors garage. It is here that he says this time we're using the SHIELD astrophysical records and we cross-reference them with the SWORD database. Given SWORD is the cosmic cousin of SHIELD it stands to reason that they would be involved in the arrival of several extraterrestrials in New Mexico. Instead the MCU sidelined the organization throughout the Infinity Saga and the several distinctly cosmic events that transpired within it. The reasons for omitting Selvig's mention of SWORD are unclear though it is likely Marvel did not wish to overcomplicate matters by introducing both SWORD and SHIELD in the early days of the MCU. Frigga's death in Thor, the Dark World happened before Thor or Odin could do anything to intervene as both entered the room in which she was fatally stabbed moments too late. Things play out very differently in this deleted scene as Odin enters moments before Coors delivers the final blow. Yet instead of using Gungnir to kill Malkith and Coors before they can harm Frigga Odin decides to lay down his arms in a show of peace following a conversation about his more warlike father. Malkith responds by ordering Coors to kill Frigga. Ultimately Odin's failure to intervene in time achieved the same outcome for Odin while also skirting the implication that Malkith outmaneuvered the God of Wisdom. 
while Odin no doubt feels the weight of failing to intervene in the scene that was ultimately used Odin's character arc would have been far more severely affected by the consequences of his inaction. Having Odin make such a misguided judgment would have also affected his relationship with Thor who still entered the room to bestow Malkit with his facial scar moments later. Ultimately Odin's failure to intervene in time achieved the same outcome for Odin while also skirting the implication that Malkith outmaneuvered the God of Wisdom. Thor's meeting with Doctor Strange in Thor, Ragnarok offered one of the most fun cameos by a new MCU hero as he asked the wizard where he could find his father. This almost looked decidedly different as the two interacted without Loki present and with Odin in New York instead of Norway. While this set up a significant change to Odin's final scene in the MCU it also ended with a handshake where Strange made a grave prediction about Thor's future stating in the middle of a handshake. I sense a great change in your future Thor. A change you can neither control nor avoid. You've chosen many paths in your life but now only one remains. Destiny has dire plans for you my friend. This scene is ostensibly meant to set up the cataclysmic conclusion of Thor, Ragnarok where Thor accepts the destruction of Asgard. Yet Doctor Strange's prediction could easily be looking even further into Thor's future. After all Thor, Love and Thunder saw Thor experience another great loss in the form of Jane Foster, a change he could neither control nor avoid. The same could be said of the snap which came after another of Strange's predictions and Thor's attempt to kill Thanos. This could mean Thor 5 has yet more dire things in store for Thor including his death. Thor 5 is yet to be officially confirmed by Marvel. While it helped to spotlight him Thor, Ragnarok perversely helped to hammer home Hulk's sidelining in the MCU as he remained a secondary character in Thor's MCU story. This sentiment is further encapsulated in a deleted scene that sees Bruce Banner and Thor having a heart-to-heart -heart where Banner's unplumbed backstory is elaborated upon. Here he admits shame for missing his father's death after throwing himself into his work too wholeheartedly. Yet seconds later he diminishes his experience in comparison to Thor's. Even so having a little more backstory for Bruce Banner would have been even slightly more beneficial to his overall MCU arc. Banner seeming to express regret for not being there for his father's death is a significant development that seems to fly in the face of his comic book origins where his father's abuse gave rise to Hulk. Ultimately the scene was deleted compounding the insult to Hulk and his MCU journey. The official trailer for Thor, Ragnarok depicted one scene that looked markedly different in the final cut. This was part of a deleted scene that saw Hela emerge in a New York alleyway while Odin who was wandering the streets in a state of disorder was alive and present. This then culminates in Hela killing Odin with one of her necros words, which is a far cry from how things ultimately transpired. Unlike the final cut this deleted scene makes Odin look weak in his final moments diminishing the reputation the MCU had built for him thus far which the fact that his hopelessness in the face of oncoming Ragnarok intensifies. Using the scene to highlight Hela by comparison meanwhile was nullified by the fact that Hela could so easily destroy Mjolnir. It would have been a poor reflection on Odin's legacy to keep the scene which was significantly changed in the end. Thor Love and Thunder came under fire for its overzealous reliance on comedy ultimately failing to tread the same fine line as Thor, Ragnarok. Meanwhile certain scenes fell too fleeting such as Thor's visit to Omnipotence City a realm that houses every god. A deleted scene sees Thor Valkyrie Jane and Korg interact directly with one of these gods Dionysus the Greek god of wine and son of Zeus. Suffice it to say the scene serves two purposes, to bestow the party with information on Zeus' whereabouts and to paint Dionysus as insufferable. This abrasive personality would of course be mirrored by Zeus later in the same segment. What it shows however is that the gods of Omnipotence City don't like outsiders and with Dionysus and Zeus being two of the only other gods with which the party interacts demonstrates that most, if not all, of the gods are particularly unpleasant people. In the case of Zeus' children in particular it throws into question whether Hercules will also be as abrasive and unpleasant as his half-siblings and father. The scene also offers a much needed deeper look at Omnipotence City. Another deleted scene however helps to paint Zeus in a much kinder light. 
it shows Zeus visiting Thor and Jane after their interaction in Omnipotence City with the intention of bestowing Thor with the power to manifest Thunderbolt by harnessing energy and telling Thor where to find eternity. The scene leaves the gods on amicable terms flying in the face of the Thor, Love and Thunder post credit scene that sets up Zeus' revenge via Hercules which gives a clue as to why it was deleted. This is a shame as the scene affords Zeus a level of character depth of which he was deprived in his introduction. It also changed the nature of eternity as Zeus insists he cannot join Thor as one must be pure in order to visit whereas no such restriction seems to be in place for the Necro's word tainted and murderous gore. This would have given Zeus, the king of the gods on a par with Odin, a much needed boost to his MCU legacy. As it stands however the god is simply a pernicious font of comic relief. A lawsuit against Lena Headey by her former agency revealed that the actress had an undisclosed role in Thor, Love and Thunder that did not make the final cut, via Variety. The agency was suing Headey for failing to pay a commission after landing the role in Thor, Love and Thunder but Hedy's defense suggests that it was a role that came about after being approached by Take Away to Tie directly. As for what the role or the scene in which she might have appeared was none of the entities involved have divulged details. Given the fact that the entire sequence felt cut down it stands to reason that Hedy may have been portraying another Olympian in omnipotent city such as Zeus' wife Hera. She does after all have experience playing haughty royal figures from her time as Queen Cersei in Game of Thrones. Suffice it to say however that a fleeting cameo from Hedy in Thor, Love and Thunder does not exactly do justice to her ability unless it was for a character that was poised to make a reappearance in the MCU down the line. Upcoming Marvel Movies Release Date Deadpool and Wolverine July 26, 2024 Captain America, Brave New World February 14, 2025 Thunderbolts Asterisk May 2, 2025 Fantastic Four July 25, 2025 Blade November 7, 2025 Avengers, The Kong Dynasty May 1, 2026 Avengers, Secret Wars May 7, 2027. We want to hear from you. Share your opinions in the thread below and remember to keep it respectful. DC's extensive Batman history stretches further than many realize, which may explain why its most underrated performance belongs to an MCU actor. Skr King's backstory in Godzilla x Kong, The New Empire is further proof that Kong's loss to Godzilla in the MonsterVerse was inevitable. Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith suggests force lighting caused Pal Patton's disfigurement but another force power may have been at play. The 1990s saw the publication of enduring works of literature that remain classics to this day based on their popularity and notoriety. Chuck Norris is one of martial arts most talented fighters and these iconic fight scenes showcase why he is considered the top star in the field. Exclusive Another original Ghost star shares their thoughts on Channing Tatum's upcoming remake giving their seal of approval to the gifted star. Greta Gerwig's Chronicles of Narnia adaptations have significant challenges to overcome. One obstacle from the book stands out above the rest.